My name is Nanki Kaur, and I head up the Adaptation and Resilience Building Program at the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. So the world, uh, why does the world need to be concerned about the climate crisis in the Hindu Kush Himalaya? The Hindu Kush Himalaya is considered to be the pulse of the planet. This is a region that spreads all the way from Afghanistan in the west to Myanmar in the east. Uh, and, and this mountainous region is actually home to 240 million people who live in the mountains and an additional 1.65 billion people who live downstream. It is also home to a very to diverse, to, to diverse biodiversity uh, that's, that includes four of the world's uh, global biodiversity hotspots and almost 20% of the land in this region is under ice. Uh, this ice is actually the source of 10 of the major river systems across Asia and these rivers then go on to provide food and water security to people living in this region. In fact, in terms of food production, uh, this region provides food to almost 3 billion people. That's about one third of humanity. So it, it really is a critical region when we come to think of it. But unfortunately, this region is also at the front line of the climate crisis. Even if temperatures were to rise by 1.5 degrees, uh, that's too hot for our region. It will mean that we will lose a significant volume of our glaciers and communities in our region are already facing the brunt of increasingly frequent floods, droughts, and these sorts of impacts are completely destabilizing the well-being of the people that rely on this region. So for, for all these reasons, it's a critical reg a region and we really must protect and promote the pulse of the planet. As we know, climate impacts, they cut across country borders. So there is need to cooperate to address these transboundary shocks. And secondly, there is also the need to cooperate so that we can really deliver these actions at scale. We here at Isimod think there are two critical things we can do to support mountain communities to deal with climate change. The first of these is to scale up investment in mountain-specific climate priorities. So when we refer to investment, that means scaling up financial resources, scaling up uh, capacities, whether those are skills uh, or systems, uh, to have these in place so that mountain communities can deal with climate change. So while we say this, we also recognize that people in the mountains are already doing a lot to deal with climate change. So if you take the example of mountain enterprises, if you look at the tourism sector, <clears throat> there are many small enterprises that are shifting to renewable energy to heat up their homestays or to produce uh, safer food for, for their customers. So that's a great example of moving towards a more greener business model. If you look at our governments in, in the Hindu Kush Himalaya region, all eight governments have put in place some very ambitious uh, climate plans to deal with climate change, whether they, those are plans to start reducing uh, emissions or they are plans to scale up investment in adaptation, be that through better disaster risk reduction measures or measures to improve food and water security. But all these actions, whether it's being taken by local communities or the private sector or by the government, require money and they require skills, uh, which is a very big gap in our region. And that, for us, is the first priority, again, to scale up investment in mountain-specific priorities. The second area that we think can really support mountain communities would be to strengthen cooperation uh, between the eight countries so that uh, we can come together to address climate risks which actually cut across national borders and we can work together to deliver these actions uh, at, at scale and also with speed because this is the decade of climate action. Whatever we do over the next 10 years will determine how resilient our people will be or not as we move forward. So COP26, which takes place later this year, is a time when countries of the world will come together uh, to put forward their own actions of how they're going to implement the Paris uh, Agreement. 
So the Paris Agreement includes three important goals. The first one is the mitigation goal, which aims to keep to limit global, the rise of global temperature to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, the second one is the adaptation goal, which aims to scale up investment in adaptation. And the third one is the finance goal, which aims to mobilize the financial resources which will be used to, action, to then implement these adaptation and mitigation actions. So this is a, this is a very important meeting uh, because what countries put forward on the table in terms of how they'll implement these goals will have, an, will have implications for our region for the next decade. So it's critically important that mountain voices are part of, of this debate <clears throat> and that mountain priorities are reflected in the actions that are agreed upon and then taken forward. So we here at ISIMOD uh, over the next few months are working with our regional member countries uh, to really <clears throat> under what we end up calling the HKH to Glasgow campaign. So this is a campaign where, which aims to do two things at COP26. The first one is to promote uh, ambitious climate action for the Hindu Kush Himalaya region. And the second one is to ensure that we are able to scale up investment in these actions uh, as we move forward into the implementation phase after COP26. So we at ISIMOD are working with our regional member countries uh, to take forward the HKH to, Glo uh, to Glasgow campaign. Uh, under this campaign, we have two objectives. The first one is to promote um, ambitious climate action for the Hindu Kush Himalaya region. And the second one is to scale up investment in mountain specific climate priorities. There are three messages that we are taking to COP26. The first one is that the HKH is the pulse of the planet. And as such, it must be recognized as a global resource which supports, almost, which supports one third of humanity. So any race to resilience or a race to zero must focus on our region, which is, which is facing, which is at the front line of the climate crisis. A 1.5 degree world is too hot for us uh, and ambitious climate action is important. The second message that we are taking forward is what we refer to as mountains of opportunity. So in order to implement ambitious climate action, there is a need to scale up investment in mountain specific priorities. In order to do this, one way that our countries are working together is to see how they can align investment that they are making under their COVID recovery measures and align that to climate action so that they can leverage the finances, the capacities, the, the policy instruments to ensure that mountain people are able to transition to a more green, a more inclusive and a more resilient world. The third message that we are focusing on is what we refer to as the power of eight. And this really is about our eight countries coming together, working together, and by doing so, being able to leverage uh, better regional cooperation and international cooperation to, to really support or scale up investment in mountain-specific priorities at scale and with speed.